Hi everyone. Um, so we have concluded coagulation. Wow. So we are we are now entering hematology. Okay. So in hematology, we are going to look at the parameter that is being measured measured in full blood count. Okay. Then we can look at the um, blood film morphology as well. Then after that, yeah, transfusion. Okay. But anyway, so in in hematology, so we measure full blood count, complete blood count. It will be good to know what is complete blood count. So before then, what is blood? Okay, blood compose the liquid part and the cell part. Okay, so the liquid part is the plasma and the, or serum. Okay, then um, the cell part is where you get red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelet or thrombocytes. So in full blood count, we are more concerned about these blood cells. How are they behaving? Are they normal or are they abnormal? Okay. Once again, my name is Dr. Emmanuel Lobodo. I've been working as a hematology and uh, transfusion scientist here in the United Kingdom and currently I'm a lecturer here in the United Kingdom. And let's get on to it. First of all, I want you to know that the blood cells are produced from the bone marrow. Okay. So ideally, these blood cells, they go through stages. Okay. Okay, they go through stages before they can differentiate. Okay, they continue to differentiate into a mature cell. So, following the differentiation up to the mature cell, then they can be pushed to the blood. That's the one you see in the system. Okay, so from the stem cell, you can have myeloid, lymphoid. Okay, from the lymphoid, you get lymphocyte. From the myeloid, you can get thrombocyte, you can get red blood cell, you can get, you know, all the other type of white blood cells such as neutrophils, uh, monocyte, eosinophils, and basophils. So that's what happened, okay? But in some cases, if the bone marrow is stressed, it can cause the bone marrow to start producing immature cells, pushing it in the system. And that is some of the things that the full blood count help us to measure. So let's start gradually, then we'll get into the big things, okay? So what I want to start off with is that I want you to know that red blood cells, there's what we call red blood cell indices. These red blood cell indices help us to understand whether the red cells are healthy, what is their structure like. It can give an indication what the problem might be, okay? So in the red blood cell indices, you can get red blood cell. You can get hematocrit, you can get uh, MCV, which is mean cell volume, then you can get MCH, mean cell hemoglobin, MCHC, mean cell hemoglobin concentration, you can even get RUDW, which is red cell distribution weight. Each of these parameters indicates something. They are not just there, they indicate something. And one of the things I'm going to be showing you is what they indicate. Okay, so and I want you to pay attention to it, but now I want you to start off with anemia because that is one of the things that the red blood full blood count will suggest for you whether somebody is anemic or not. So let's start off with anemia. In anemia, there are three major class classification of anemia. Three major classification of anemia. You have microcytic anemia, you have normocytic anemia, then you have macrocytic anemia. How can you be able to classify these anemias? You classify them using one of the red blood cell indices known as mean cell volume, MCV. Remember that anemia, for you to say that someone is anemic, you need to look at hemoglobin, red blood cell, hematocrit. When these parameters are low, the person is anemic. So once you have the once you have come to the point of knowing this person is anemic, the next question is that what type of anemia? So then you check the MCV. If the MCV is low, if the MCV is low, is microcytic anemia. If the MCV is normal, is normocytic anemia. If the MCV is high, is macrocytic anemia. How do you know whether MCV is low or high as a case may be? You don't want MCV to be less than 70. And you don't want MCV to be 105 or more than 105. So once MCV is less than 70, it is low MCV. When MCV is 105 and above, it is high MCV. Anything in between, you can look at it as normal MCV. Okay? Now, let's take it one after the other. 
when it is low MC. What does it mean, microcytic anemia? It means that the red blood cell size is small in size. Red blood cells, they are small in size. That's why it's called microcytic anemia. Now, what can cause red blood cells to be small in size? One of the things that can do that is iron deficiency. And it could be some health conditions such as maybe beta thalassemia, as the case may be. Okay? So, low MCV shows small size of red blood cell, which is a microcytic, okay? And that can be due to iron deficiency. Therefore, low MCV can be seen if the hemoglobin is low, red cell is low, hematocrit is low, MCV is low, then you say this person has got microcytic anemia, which could be as a result of iron deficiency. Okay? So that is what happened there. The second lizard, normocytic anemia. So this person has low hemoglobin, but the MCV is normal. You say this person has got normocytic anemia. One of the good examples, one of the things I like to use as a good example of normocytic anemia. There are so many things, but let's use this one. For example, if somebody has an accident, bleeding as the case may be, the person is going to lose a lot amount of red blood cells and that will make the, vol the amount of the red blood cell in the system to reduce. It has nothing to do with the size of the person's red blood cell. So in such condition where red blood cell is low because of excess bleeding or major hemorrhage, but the MCV is normal, you call it normocytic anemia. But if the hemoglobin is low, okay, but the MCV is high, you are looking at macrocytic anemia, meaning that the red cells, they are bigger in size than they should. I'm going to divide my macrocytic anemia into two. One, megaloblastic anemia, and two, non-megaloblastic anemia. Megaloblastic anemia is when the MCV is high and the hemoglobin is low, and this is due to vitamin B12 or folate deficiency. But when MCV is high and the hemoglobin is low, but vitamin B12 and folate is normal, it could be due to chronic disease such as liver disease and kidney disease. In such situation, you call it non-megaloblastic anemia. So, when that happens, if you do a full blood count of a patient, okay, and the hemoglobin is low, suggesting anemia, and you look at the MCV, it is low. What you need to do as a good BMS is to look at the, the ferritin, the transferrin, total ion binding capacity of that patient. So when you look at the, something like ferritin or total ion issue, if it is low, it confirms that it is ion deficiency anemia. But if it is not low, you might need to start thinking some things like thalassemia, like beta thalassemia. Now, if the MCV is high and hemoglobin is low, okay, then, then you start thinking about, oh, macrocytic anemia, but you now need to check, is it due to fat, vitamin B12 or folate deficiency? What do you do? You check the vitamin B12 or folate of that patient. If it is low, it indicates, yes, this is due to deficiency of vitamin B12 or folate. But if they are normal, you can start thinking about chronic diseases such as liver disease, or kidney disease. You see, so that is how you can be able to classify this anemia. But, but let me say another thing. You might go for an interview and they present a result. Don't just say this is a microcytic anemia and stop. You need to tell them it could be due to iron deficiency and you what are you going to do? You will check the iron. If it is normal, that means you need to think about beta thalassemia. But if it is low, yes, it's iron deficiency anemia. If you check it, there is no any result of that iron in the patient history. You need to put a comment if you do the blood film telling this doctor suggest iron studies. Okay, the same thing is applicable with high MCV. Okay, if you check the vitamin B12 or folate, the result is not there. When you do the blood film, you tell the doctor suggest you know uh, vitamin B12 and folate you know uh, studies something like that. So when you do that, it shows that yes, you understand what the result indicates. Anyway, so from the high MCV, megaloblastic, vitamin B12 for folate deficiency, non-megaloblastic anemia, chronic diseases such as liver disease or kidney disease. 
Now, that's your answer. So, what would be the morphology of this? Bluffing morphology. So, the bluffing morphology would be something like I'm going to just say the basic thing. When you talk, when you look at things like uh, microcytic anemia, low MCD, you're going to see microcytosis. Microcytosis. Then you can see hypochromia or hypochromic, okay? You might see all, all things like maybe tiger cells, okay? But if it is macrocytic anemia, you're going to see macrocytosis and you see something like polychromatia, okay? And in some cases, you might see uh, nucleated red cells, okay? So these are some of the things that you may see. Now, let us now look at other things that this result can help you. Time may not allow me to go into so many details, but let me also quickly tell you that this MCV does not change, it's one of the parameters in the red blood cell indices, is one of the parameters that cannot change suddenly. If MCV it hardly change, there are factors that can only alter MCV. One, major hemorrhage. Somebody has excessively bleeded. Yes, that can alter the MCV. Another thing that can alter MCV within a short period of time, if it is if it is old sample. A sample was taken today, after two days they bring it to the lab. That can alter the MCV. Another thing that can alter the MCV is diluted sample. What do I mean by diluted sample? You know the way they will put a cannula in a patient where a patient is taking, is taking a drip. Then sometimes doctors or nurses will open the cannula, stop the drip, open the cannula and collect blood from there. The blood is flowing with the drip. So that drip will dilute the blood and that is diluted sample. Yes, that can affect the MCV. You see, so from the MCV, you can know whether it is old sample, you can know whether it is diluted samples. Do you understand? You can also know whether it is a wrong sample in two. You can also know whether it is due to major hemorrhage. And of course, this thing should reflect, it should correspond with the other rest of indices like hemoglobin. Now, let's look at that. If MCV change within a short period of time, it might be old sample. So you need to check when was that sample collected. Okay? Now, what do I mean by that? MCV of a patient, for example, that is always 80. You might, anyone that MCV is 80 may be 80, 79, 78, 82, 83. But once it changed from any of these 82, 83, 79, 78, and goes to maybe 60, or 100 within a short period of time it could be due to wrong sample in two it may indicate it is not the patient so you tell them this might be due to wrong sample in two if that is not the case okay you need to check when that mcv drop will change you know within a short period of time you check has the person been transfused why should transfusion do that Transfusion will do that because when you are transfused, you are taking another population of someone's blood and is mixing with your own blood, and that can alter the MCV. You see it now. Then another thing is that with MCV, you will know whether it's a wrong patient, whether it is old sample. So MCV of a patient, the same patient used to be 80, some 85, 82, 83, as you can. Now it is 115. Go and check when was that sample collected. It might be two days ago, three days ago, as the case may be. So that's another way you can know. And again, of course, if it is diluted sample, of course, that one will be obviously because it's going to be watery, as the case may be. Then that is also one of the things that MCV can suggest to you. So now, that is where I'm going to stop for today. But what you can see that from MCV, you will classify anemia. You can know whether it is a wrong sample in tube. You can know whether it is diluted sample. You can know whether it is old sample. Do you understand? You can know whether there is a major hemorrhage. Don't forget, MCV hardly change within a short period of time, except if there are major hemorrhage, something like diluted sample, okay? And if it is maybe old sample. Anything outside this, MCV hardly change. And that is where I'm going to stop today. So when they give you a result on full blood count and the hemoglobin is low, look at the MCV. That way you can know whether it's a microcytic anemia, normocytic anemia, or macrocytic anemia. 
whichever direction it goes, give them the rest of the stories like I've told you. Thank you very much again. Don't forget to subscribe, like, put your comment. I keep saying this, that all I want to do is to support you guys to get a job as a biomedical scientist. And I hope this video helped you. I'm looking forward to get your comment and keep looking forward for the videos that I'm going to be making. Next video, I'm going to be talking about MCSC, Mr. Hemoglobin Concentration. Thank you very much until I come your way again. Bye.